Zips Football Weekly with Tom Arth. Presented by Wentz Financial Group. Investment management for your lifetime. Hosted by Joe Dunn. Contributing partners include Summa Health. It's your health. Let's own it together. Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Hilton Akron Fairlawn. Proud to be the host hotel of Zips Football. And the Spaghetti Warehouse. Famous for its 15 layer lasagna. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a brand new season of Zips Football Weekly. My name is Joe Dunn, and here's your invitation to join us each week as we update you in the 2019 University of Akron Zips. And of course, it's brought to you every week by our friends at the Wentz Financial Group. Well, it's a brand new era in University of Akron football as you welcome in the new head coach of the Zips, head coach Tom Arth. And coach, we're going to talk about your football team today. We're going to give fans a little preview of the offense, defense, special teams, look ahead to that Illinois game on Saturday, but boy, game week's here, coach, we're ready to go. It is, it's, uh, it's exciting. Uh, beginning of a new school year, uh, game week for us, it was, just, it was a great morning. We just came off the practice field and uh, you can feel, you can feel the, the, the urgency sure. in our players and the excitement in our players and our coaches and it's, it's really exciting. Let's talk about the offense, coach. When you came into uh, Akron, you took a look at Cato Nelson. What has impressed you the most since you've been working with Cato all the way back in the spring? You know, coming in, uh, before we even ever had a chance to meet Cato, had a chance to watch his film, and you could see the talent, you could see the ability, and there was so much excitement on my end to, to get a chance to meet Cato and uh, to know, you know, what he's capable of doing within our offense. And to me, what's been most, uh, what's been most exciting for us is just his development throughout sure. uh, this spring, uh, throughout the, the summer, and through fall camp. Cato has just improved uh, tremendously in so many different ways, and uh, really excited for him. I think he has a, an opportunity to have a really great season for us. I've seen you practice a lot, Coach, and you've got a lot of quarterbacks now. I think there's five or six that are working out with you. We do. We have uh, we have six quarterbacks. It's yeah. a really great group. Um, I've been really proud of the quarterback position. I think it's such a competitive position. Only one guy can be out there, and a lot of times you can you can have competition that you know is is not always positive. And um, for this group, the way they've competed against one another. Um, has been always in the sense of our team and pushing each other to be as good as they can be for the team. And I think that that's gone a long way for, for our offense in general and, and also for our program. And the depth of quarterback looks pretty good, Coach. You've got a, uh, a guy that's played a lot of college football, not at the Division One level, but he's backing up Cato. Yeah, uh, Robbie Kelly um, is uh, going into his sixth year, yeah. working, on, uh, working on his second uh, master's degree program, which is, which is really outstanding sure. for him. And uh, he brings a veteran uh, leadership to our group. And I think that's been uh, most exciting for us in watching Robbie's development is just how he has really taken control and taken ownership of his role as the number two behind Cato. And he's kind of that guy that you know, gets, the, gets the offense going yeah. uh, when they need it. And he, he's stepped right in uh, to all of his reps and performed at a really high level. So it's been great to see. First time I talked to you, Coach, back in spring, we talked about the wide receivers maybe being a strength of this football team. Is that still your thoughts right now? you got a good group. We do. We have a, a really talented group of wide receivers, all very different. Um, I think that when you're looking at wide receivers, you really want to look at it in terms of a basketball team. You know, you got your big guy, you yeah. got your center, uh, your power forward, uh, your small forward, your shooting guard, your point guard. And I think, you know, at, at the wide receiver position, you're always looking for those different body types, different skill sets um, that can really complement one another and can fit into your offense and uh, into roles um, individually for each player. So I think that's, a, that's an area where we have some depth. Uh, we're, we're fighting back from, from some injuries yeah. at that position, um, which has been great to see some guys getting healthy. Um, but I think uh, you know, with Cato and his experience and uh, some of the depth that we have at wide receiver, I think that can be a, you know, a weapon for us. Who are some of the names fans should look for maybe as far as the passing game's concerned as wide receiver? Well, you know, I think uh, certainly uh, Andre Williams has had, a, yeah. has had a great career here, had a great season last year at Akron, and uh, we expect that to continue. We hope that to continue. Um, Nate Stewart had an outstanding yes, he camp. Uh, he has been, he's been fantastic. Uh, Boogie is just so dependable, so reliable, uh, really uh, outstanding football player overall. You got guys like Tim Scipio and, and Dustin Burkhart that have really come on and mm -hmm. uh, shown that they can, they can compete at a high level. Julian Hicks, uh, we're very excited about oh, yeah. our freshman Mike Matheson. 
um, has done very well for us. MJ McGriff, Trey Richardson, uh, just a, a really, really solid group, deep group, um, and uh, you know, a group that we're going to lean on. When we line up, uh, or maybe on third and long, will we see four receivers? Will we see an empty backfield? What are fans going to look for, maybe offensively? You, you know, that'll depend a lot on uh, the opponent that we're yeah. playing and what their uh, what their uh, tendencies are in those situations. But I think you'll see a little bit of everything. You'll okay. see uh, you'll see some some situations where we have five wide receivers on the field. You'll see some situations where we have one or maybe none okay. um, on the field. It all uh, really depends on the situation uh, in the game and uh, what we feel gives us the best opportunity to be successful in that moment. Let's move to the running backs, Coach, because you got a couple guys, not real tall, about 5'9", but they are put together solid, a little over 215 pounds each. You're excited about those two guys. Yeah, absolutely. I think the running back position has been, um, you know, it's been a great battle um, throughout uh, going back to spring, uh, even, you know, up to this point where we are today. I don't know if it's been, uh, if anything's been decided um, at this point. We certainly have our core group of players that we know are going to get reps, but as far as who that workhorse is going to be, who's going to be the guy out there getting the majority of the carries, um, you know, that's still to be determined, but uh, I think we feel really good about where that group is and we've seen um, Deltron Sands, you know, really develop quite nicely yeah. from spring to, to fall and, um, you know, young guys like uh, Brandon Lee, Micaiah Burton, um, who have really come on uh, strong for us. So we're, we're excited to see. As a former quarterback, you always appreciated your offensive line and that is going to be key for the success of this football team. How's that group coming along? I've uh, been really pleased with our offensive line. Um, that's a group that it's so critical to your success uh, as a program, you know, not just as an offense, but, but as a program. We always say um, our offensive linemen are the heart and soul of our team. And um, I think our group um, this year has really come into their own. Uh, they have a lot of fun. I think it starts in the meetings. Uh, they're high energy guys. They, uh, they joke around with each other a lot. You can tell um, the relationships there are really strong and it, it sets a great tone for our entire offense. Um, and brings our entire offense together. And um, I think that, uh, I think we're gonna be good up front. I really do, I feel, I feel very, very confident in that group. Coach, stay put, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna meet a couple of members of Coach Sarf's coaching staff, our coordinators. So don't go away. Zips Football Weekly returns right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. The University of Akron is more than a college or campus. It's a connection to the community. To the thousands of opportunities right here in Northeast Ohio. And to the partnerships with employers and organizations. Like the LeBron James Family Foundation, where we connect kids to life-changing possibilities. It's the strength of UA, this city, and these connections. It's where students make an impact on their community and in the world. While still making an impact in the classroom. On the track. In the boardroom. And in my community. That's what makes us the University of Akron. Okay, welcome back to Zips Football Weekly. Each week at this time, we're going to have a special feature on the 2019 University of Akron Zips. Today, a special feature on offensive coordinator Tommy Zagorski, defensive coordinator Matt Keeney. Let's meet them right now. You know, Coach Arth and I both come from Northeast Ohio, two storied programs in St. Ignatius High School for Coach Arth, Benedictine High School for myself, and then Coach Arth playing down the street at John Carroll University, and I got to play Case Western Reserve. And growing up as a young boy in Northeast Ohio, Friday nights, there's nothing like it. Saturdays are special as well. And I remember being an eighth grader at St. Dominic grade school and always going to see the Ignatius Wildcats play on Saturday night after watching Benedictine play on Friday. And I got to see this number three guy take the field. I go, who's this Tom Arth guy? I meet him on my shadow day, and I go, wow, humility. It's the first time I ever got to meet him. It was something very, very special. And he's never changed from playing in the National Football League to being a head football coach at the Division III level, the FCS level, and now the FBS level. There's something unique about him. It, it means the world. Um, you know, we're closer to family now, which is nice. My wife and I, uh, high school sweethearts, you know, both born in Columbus, Ohio, went you know, to high school together. And um, so it's really nice that, you know, our families are back in town and we get to be closer to them. We get to see them a little bit more. So that's always a, a great feeling from the family side. And, you know, to be back in Ohio and, and recruiting Ohio football again and Pennsylvania football again, it, it's really exciting for us because we know the talent level 
that's, uh, that's here, especially in Northeast Ohio, Central Ohio, down in Cincinnati, Toledo, everywhere. At the end of the year, um, you know, at Eastern Kentucky, we finished the season really strong. Four, four wins, we finished the season seven and four, just missed the FCS playoffs. I get a call from Coach Arth that, uh, that Sunday night and says, hey, man, you called some great games. And he and I had been talking a bunch, but he gives me that call and he says, I want you to be my offensive line coach and offensive coordinator at Chattanooga. I said yes. I didn't say anything. I didn't know what I was going to pay. I didn't know what else was going on. I didn't know anyone on the team. I said, I'm going because I had that much faith in the man. We get in there, we start working. We have recruited for him for about six or seven days down in the south. Uh, next thing I know, he goes, hey, do you have a list of Ohio guys that you really love? I go, absolutely. He goes, we're going to go after this hackling job. And uh, it was really humbling to have that opportunity. And, you know, my, my family was excited. And to be able to come back here uh, it was really, really, uh, you know, exciting. Being a player for Coach Arth, uh, you know, several years ago now, you know, I, I just knew when he took over the team um, my senior year, I just, I just knew it, it was something different. There's a different energy. There's a different feel. Um, everybody in the program was so excited. Um, you know, he coached the way that we wanted to coach. And, and as a player there, I knew, um, you know, I wanted to be a coach. You know, changing from being a player to a GA to a full-time to, you know, end up being the defense coordinator. You know, I think Coach Arth and I are, I've, I've really gotten very close and, and we get on the same page very quickly with what we want to get accomplished. And, you know, I think we have similar motivation and, uh, you know, we're both extremely competitive. So that makes it fun to go against each other. You know, it's a multiple offense. You know, we're going to be intellectual in the way that we attack teams, from the way that we have different, different formations, different motions. Um, our run game and our pass game will simultaneously work together to set up outstanding play actions and give ourselves an opportunity to attack the team vertically, but also in the intermediate. And I think one of the things you'll see is that, you know, Cato Nelson's a great, outstanding quarterback, but a lot of people, when I came in, go, oh, he's an athlete, he's a wild this, wild that. Cato wants to be a great football player. He's investing in it every single day, and our guys gravitate towards that. And these guys pull together every single day. They grow as a football family, and really are going to be something special to watch on Saturdays, and then we get later in the season on those Tuesdays, Wednesdays uh, in action. A lot of people are kind of labeling us as a 3-4 and stuff like that, um, you know, because that's, that's what uh, some people have done. But that's not, you know, really all we are and anything like that. We're going to be a multiple front defense. Uh, you know, that utilizes several different fronts and coverages. And more importantly, you know, by game plan, you know, that's who we're going to be. Um, like I said, it all gets back to, you know, putting our best players in the best position to be successful. So we believe if you start off simple, you can never be complex. So, you know, we've really honed in on our guys, given a lot to them from the jump so that, you know, we can do many different things with them um, throughout the season. Coach, you've known these two guys a long time. You have a lot of confidence in their ability to coach at this level. I certainly do, and I think the relationships that I have with both, both Coach Zagorski and Coach Feeney um, are, are really special. Coach Feeney and I um, you know, go back to, to Coach Feeney as a player. Sure. Uh, he happened to be a, a senior uh, my first year as a head coach at John Kerry University. He was our captain and has worked for me uh, ever since. You know, started out as a volunteer, has worked his way to a graduate assistant, to a position coach, uh, to now ultimately a coordinator. Coach Z and I have known each other actually back since Coach Z was in college. Is that right? Um, and we worked together for a long time. When I first started coaching uh, back at John Carroll as an assistant, Coach Z was, was also an assistant there. So, um, you know, we, we go back a ways and we've been through uh, some really difficult times together, uh, the three of us, and we've been through some really great times together. And I think that that's really important uh, when you're embarking on a new opportunity is that, you know, when you're with people that you trust and you're with people that you've been through some adversity with and you know how they're going to respond and uh, how they're going to deal with challenges, that gives you a great advantage. And I know that we have that here at Akron. Hope you enjoyed uh, meeting those two uh, coordinators offensively and defensively. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Coach Arth about the zip defense. So don't go away. We're back right after this. Roman was born with a hole in his heart. But thanks to the experts at SUMA who found the problem and fixed it quickly, he's feeling 26 again. Not 76. Minimally invasive heart procedures, many performed in under two hours. SUMA Health, vital for getting back in the game and more. Miller Lite is brewed for great taste with only 96 calories and zero grams of sugar. So when one's done, it's the perfect time to start another. Miller Lite, hold true. Can a beer be brewed for great taste? 
only 96 calories, with zero grams of sugar, no sweat. Miller Lite, hold true. Welcome back to Zips Football Weekly as we continue to coach with Tom Arthur. Coach, I'll tell you what, you got the defense uh, ready to go. You got two veterans back, which always helps, one in the secondary and one at linebacker. We do. I think, uh, you know, Alvin Davis uh, certainly uh, so much experience uh, playing in our defense and has had so much success. We're really going to rely on Alvin a lot for his leadership along with uh, John Laco yeah. and Sean Featherstone. Um, you know, three of our veteran players uh, on the defense in a group that is going to be young and going to have a lot of young guys out there competing and playing. But I think the example that those three have set um, has been uh, has been really great for for our team and for for those young guys on defense. Let's start up front, Coach. You got some veterans back, but you brought in a lot of new guys just prior to practice. How's that unit looking? You know, it's uh, it's looking really, really strong. Um, a lot better than we were uh, in in the springtime. That was a that was a position group that gave me a lot of concern um, going in, just to, just in terms of the numbers. Uh, in order to be a really good college football team, I think you need to you need to have a, a, a great great depth at oh, the yeah. defensive line position. And um, I think right now we have uh, we have that. We have. Um, at least you know nine, ten guys that we feel confident in that can go in and play and can rotate and um, you know be be successful. So uh, we feel much better about that group at this point uh, than we did a few months ago. Let's talk about the linebackers. You got John Laco, who's one of the better players in the Mid American Conference. What about that group? You know the linebackers uh, is a group again very similar to the defensive line that there were a lot of question marks uh, at. Uh, coming going into spring and even coming out of spring and I think uh, we feel uh, very good about that group and, and certainly with um, you know with Laco and, and Bubba Arslanian who's uh, been you know such a such a constant contributor uh, for our program and is capable of doing doing so many different things whether it's special teams or you know adding value in a number of different roles uh, on the defense side of the ball that we can count on and a, and a new player uh, to our program uh, Demetric Watts um, who's transferred in and who's done a really, really good job uh, for us, who's competed really well and I think elevated the play of that entire group. You mentioned Alvin Davis. I think you've moved him to a corner position, open up that safety position for some talented young kids. What's that group look like? You know, secondary, uh, again, like you said, is, is, is young, um, graduate a lot, you know, really on the defensive side of the ball in general, but especially in the secondary. And, um, you know, Alvin has is, is really had the opportunity to, to rep for us at corner. He's repped for us. Um, at safety, he's rep for us in the slot, and you know that's important. Yeah. You know to to have a group that's versatile that can add uh, you know multi-positional value when guys go down or guys need to blow to be able to have our best players out there and to be able to plug them into the positions that they need to play is really important. So um, you know that's been that's been key for us. And Sean Featherstone um, has had an outstanding camp. Um, really been you know uh, of all the players in our program, I think we've been. Um, you know, as, as excited about Sean's development as, as any. And this is a guy, you know, going into his sixth year That's right. um, as well. And he's just getting better every single day. So I'm excited for him. Um, I know this is a, an important season for him and for Alvin. And um, I'm excited for those guys. Special teams quickly, Coach. What about your kickers and your return men? Yeah, you know, um, you know I think if you, if you start with the, with the kickers, um, Jerry's had an outstanding yeah. camp. Uh, you know, Corey has as well. And they've battled and they've competed. Um, you know, but I think uh, you know Jerry's really proven that um, he's got a he's got an outstanding leg. Um, you know, very strong. Um, you know, can kick it deep. You know, and our kickoffs is uh, good. From you know, we get inside the 35 yard line, we feel pretty good sure. uh, about Jerry's ability to put it in. And um, you know, in terms of uh, snapping, uh, Cam Lyons has done a great job for us. Peyton's done a great job for us. Um, Jonah's uh, done an outstanding job punting and uh, got a freshman, you know, Kyle's done a, a really, really good job. He's going to be a really good player um, for us and excited to continue to watch how he develops. You know, kickers in college football right now are kicking the ball so deep into the end zone. You don't have a lot of returns, but if they do kick it, you've got a couple guys that can give you good field position. Yeah, we definitely do. I think, uh, you know, from a returner standpoint, um, you know, there's a number of guys back there that are repping and uh, still haven't uh, made any final decisions as to who's going to be, you know, the punt returner, who's going to be the kick returner, that whether there's going to be a rotation or not. But I think, uh, you know, between Dre, Alvin, uh, Boogie Knight, yeah. um, you know, any of those guys, I think we have some really, really good options uh, back there that can, you know, provide some some dangerous explosive plays. Of course, I saw Boogie Knight return a punt for a touchdown last year up at Eastern Michigan, so he can be explosive back there. He can, and he's got a great feel for it. Yeah. You know, a lot of times as a punt returner, it, it takes courage uh, to, to be back there and to put yourself into harm's way and to trust the people 
uh, in front of you. And I think Boogie uh, has done a great job of that, and uh, he's got a good feel once he gets the ball in his hands. As we said, the Zips open up the season on Saturday out of Champaign-Urbana against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Lovey Smith's the coach. We're going to take a break, come back and talk about the Zips and Illinois right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie-cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market, and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. Well, Zips will take a charter flight out of Akron Canton Airport on Friday afternoon about 3 o'clock. They will fly west to Champaign-Urbana to open up the 2019 season against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. And Coach, they a lot of optimism. Illinois opening game, they're going to be a tough one. They will be. Um, I think they, they have a lot of players back. Uh, yeah. You look offensively, defensively in the kicking game, they return a lot of players. Um, and uh, they have started playing really well towards the end of the year. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great challenge for us. They have a transfer quarterback from Michigan, Brandon Peters, who played a little bit at Michigan. I think he played in four or five games last year. He'll be the starting quarterback. They also have a uh, wide receiver transfer from Southern Cal. So they think they're going to be pretty good offensively. Yeah, they, uh, they, they, I think they will be as well. Um, you know, Brandon is a, is a really good football player. He's a big prototypical size uh, quarterback. He's got a strong arm, can make all the throws. Uh, you mentioned, you know, their wide receiver and, and also their running back. We think yeah. their running back's an excellent uh, player. And, um, you know, I think they make a living, you know, running the football. That's kind of been, um, you know, why they've won games and why they've been successful is, is, is their ability to run the football. So that'll be a big challenge for our defense uh, in order to stop that. I think the running back you're talking about is Reggie Corbin. He had 1,080 yards last year as a running back for Lovey Smith. So he's going to be a challenge. But... You know, they like their defense too, Coach. They've got a quarterback by the name of Nate Hobbs, and reading about him a couple days ago, the Illinois coaches thinks he's the uh, best cornerback in the Big Ten, so he's going to be a good coverage guy for him. He will be, and again, that's a group that, that returns just about everybody. It was a young secondary last year, an inexperienced secondary last year, and um, they all come back, and they're all going to be better, and they're all going to uh, you know, play better together. So I think um, you know, it'll be a great challenge for our wide receivers and our, our passing game uh, week one to come out and see how we match up. Of course, this is game week. As we said, the Zips will leave Friday afternoon for Champaign-Urbana. First road trip with this football team, Coach. Uh, what are some of the plans that make them feel pretty comfortable once you get over into that stadium? Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, th this is a pretty good group. Uh, it's a fun group uh, to coach. I I've said that, you know, numerous times, but I've had so much fun coaching them uh, throughout, uh, throughout fall camp and even going back into the spring. Um, uh, they enjoy uh, the experience, they enjoy the opportunity, and I'm excited to get them on the road, excited to, to travel with them and to, to be in you know, a, a Big Ten stadium in that environment and see how we come together and, and how we play. Coach, I was at Illinois the last time the Zips were there, and Akron had an outstanding linebacker by the name of Jason Taylor, who's now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Akron lined him up at tight end. They threw a touchdown pass to him. That's the only points we scored all day, but uh, that's a little trivia for you going yeah. into champagne that's, that's good to know. We may have to use Laco that way, something <laughs> like that. So we'll figure it out. Coach, best of luck uh, over in champagne or and Joe. we'll talk to you again next week. Thank you very much. A yeah, quick reminder, if you'd still like to buy season tickets for the Zips former group outing, you can call the Zip ticket office at 1-888-99-ACRON. Boy, the Zips will open up the home season portion of their schedule. That will be September 7th at InfoCision Stadium. They'll be taking on UAB, so make sure you're there. Bring some friends, and we're excited about what's going to be happening with head coach Tom Arth and the University of Akron football team for the 2019 season. Again, thanks to Coach Arth. We'll see you back here next week with another edition of Zips Football Weekly. And always remember, go Zips. Zips Football Weekly with Tom Arth. Presented by Wentz Financial Group. Investment management for your lifetime. Hosted by Joe Dunn. 
Contributing partners include Summa Health. It's your health. Let's own it together. Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Hilton Akron Fairlawn. Proud to be the host hotel of Zips Football. And the Spaghetti Warehouse. Famous for its 15-layer lasagna. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of Learfield IMG College.